SwiftUI enables custom drawing with two subtly different types, paths and shapes. Now a path is a series of drawing instructions like start here, draw a line to here, then draw a circle here, all using absolute coordinates. On the other hand, a shape is a, an object that has no idea where it'll be drawn on the screen or how big it'll be drawn, but instead we're told, please draw yourself inside this rectangle. Now helpfully, shapes are built using paths. So once you understand how paths work, shapes are easy. Also, just like paths, colors, gradients, and more, shapes are views. So you can use them alongside text, images, and more. Now SwiftUI implements the shape as a protocol with a single required method. Given the following rectangle, what path do you want to draw? This will still create and return a path just like using raw paths directly, but because we're now handed the size we'll be drawn into, we no longer have to rely on fixed coordinates. We know exactly the space we can use to draw. For example, previously we made a path to draw a triangle. We could wrap that inside a shape, which means it will automatically take up all the available space for it to draw. We could say there's a struct triangle, which is a shape. This has a path in rec method. We'll go ahead and make the path and then say path.move to a CG point with x being rect.midx, mid x, and y being rect.min y. Then path.add line to a CG point. X is rect.min x, y is rect.max y. Path add line to uh, CG point. X be rect.max x, y is rect.max y. And rect add line to, to cg point, x is rect dot mid x, mid x, y is rect dot min y. And that's our path made. Uh, I've written rect here, should be path, sorry. We can now send back return path. And that will create a triangle freely. And you can see our job now is made easier by this CG rect, a core graphics rectangle, which includes these helpful properties. Min x is the smallest x value in the rectangle, or max x is the greatest uh, x, or max y is the greatest y, or there's mid x, the halfway point horizontally. And with that in place, we can now create a, a red triangle, sorry, at an exact size. We can say there is a triangle with a fill of dot red, dot red even, with a frame width of 300, height of 300. On that renders, we should all be in well see, bang, exactly that flexible size thing. Shapes also support the same stroke style parameter, which allows us to create more advanced strokes. So rather than saying fill red, we could have said stroke width uh, dot red, and the style being a stroke style, line width will be 10, line cap will be uh, dot round, and line join will be dot round. So we get our lovely rounded triangle as well. Now the key to understanding the difference between a path and a shape is reusability. Because paths are designed to do one specific thing, draw at these exact points here, Whereas shapes have the flexibility of just drawing into some space. Here's a rectangle, what do you want to do? And they can actually accept further parameters to let them customize them further and further and further. It's your shape, you can do what you want to. But for example, we could make a, an arc shape that accepts three parameters, a start angle, an end angle, and whether draw it clockwise or anti-clockwise. And that might seem fairly straightforward, particularly because path actually has an add arc method we can call. But as you'll see, it's got a couple of interesting quirks that are worth covering. Uh, let's start with a really simple version of an arc shape. We can say there is a struct arc, which is a shape. It has those properties I mentioned. Uh, let's start angle be an angle and end angle be an angle. And uh, is it clockwise or not? Be a bull. So far, so easy, right? 
going to add that path in rect method. And this is where it gets a bit more hairy. We'll say we have a path here. I'll call on that path.addArc. And this has a few options here. Center, radius, start angle, end angle. Uh, and we're going to use this one here the without the transform, but with a, a, a start and end angle like this, that one. Um, our center, the, the center point here, will be a CG point with x of rec dot mid x and y, oops, y of rec dot mid y. So draw in the center of our available rectangle. Our radius, how big the draw arc is going to be, half our width, which is what radius is, right? Start angle is easy, that's just start angle. And end angle is easy, that's end angle. And clockwise, that's just clockwise. And then send back a path. So now we've got an arc shape, we can try drawing that. So I'll take out our triangle, and instead say there's an arc with start angle of, uh, let's do uh, degrees zero, or just zero also works. Uh, end angle, I'll do degrees of 110, and clockwise true. We'll then stroke that with blue and line width 10, and give it a frame width 300, height 300. And then I'll relaunch my preview and you'll see you think. Uh, <laughs> so we've asked for it to be drawn between 0 and 110, and that's the output. And chances are it looks nothing like what you expect. We asked for an angle between 0 and 110 with a clockwise rotation, so following the clock around. But we appear to have been given an angle drawing 90 to 200 in a counterclockwise rotation, which is not what we want, really. Now, what's happening here is twofold. First, in the eyes of Swift UI and, and most programming languages, 0 degrees is not straight up. Mathematically, it's to the right. Because uh, it's across zero to the, the x-axis, right? Second, shapes measure their coordinates from the bottom left corner rather than the top left corner, which means Swift UI goes the other way around from one angle to the other. This is, uh, in my not very humble opinion, extremely alien. <laughs> we can fix both these problems, the new path in method up here in our angle uh, that will resolve these. We're going to say uh, subtract 90 degrees from the start and end angle. So we're going zero being the top of the clock, like 12, 12 o'clock is the top. And also flips the direction so it behaves the way nature intended, quite frankly. Um, so we're going to say in our path thing here, first up, let's get our adjustments correct. We'll say let rotation adjustment be angle.degrees90. That's how much we want to change our rotation by 90 degrees, so it goes zero at the top. We'll then say, let our modified start angle be start angle minus rotation adjustment. And let modified end be end angle minus rotation adjustment. So take nine degrees off both of them. Then we have our path starting up. Then we go ahead and add the arc. Again, the center isn't gonna change, mid X, mid Y, that's the same. The radius isn't going to change, it's still going to draw the full width of the available space. The start angle, though, we're not going to use our regular start angle. We're going to use our modified start angle and our modified end angle, and we'll flip clockwise. So it goes the other way around. And now, that I think is much more like what you'd expect. If you ask someone to draw a 0 to 110 degrees arc, that's what I think you'd expect to get. Uh, so not only does it look better, it's a more natural way of working, but I think it neatly isolates the way SwiftUI's drawing works all inside that shape.